but yeah, like he's he's an artist. Mm -hmm. And and so what's happened is we really lost the sense of what that means because now everybody's an artist. You know what oh, I mean? In, in the in the age of social media. Yeah. In the age of social media yeah. and, and in the age of of really kind of and <laughs> there's a weird ignorance that's been um engendered and facilitated by the by the inundation of information yep so people have so much information but people have it's made them ignorant it, it's 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 blunted it's glutted them to the sense where they're not actually able to process things so mm -hmm. people don't even know what that means to be an artist so it's like we were i hate being like oh we i see what you're, i see what you're saying man i see what you're saying uh, about that yeah, because there's so many people calling themselves an artist and saying this is art, this is art, this is art. Yeah. And you're like, well, is it all art? I guess right. it's all art. <laughs> and this gets even into the, like the the baloney the baloney jaya yes uh, <laughs> the baloney yes. jaya job porn thing, which which we'll get to that. But I, I just want to say this right, like you and I remember growing up and like in the wake of um, Basquiat. John Michel. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And even like in the ghost of like Warhol, like yep. that, you know what I mean? Uh Herring, you know yep. what I mean? Keith, Keith Herring. Like they like these these were artists, you know? And yep. like this is even post a Picasso or you know um, Well, they're I'm, kind of in the same lineage, you know? Yes. They're but, in that same you, lineage. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like we're looking at like the sense of artist, you know? Yes, and like yes. we can just keep going on. Muka, like all these yep. people. And, and so, you could see, and you could see it, and you, you can, would see. You it. would know, like, oh, this guy, like Bastiat, Bastiat. It's probably yeah. the best example where it's just yes. like, no, that's and like one of the last, one of the last. Yeah, 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 for sure. You for know, sure. I think Banksy kind of is. He is, he hit me that way. I mean, but I was mean? I was at that age too, and yeah. like I was in that I was in L.A. at the time, and Shepherd Shepherd Fairy, like Shepherd I saw Fairy. saw yep. Shepherd Fairy, and I understood like, yeah, I understood his art in terms of the pro in terms of the. Oh, what what would I say? The that it wasn't actually in the execution so much as it was in the like the 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 thought behind the content. Yeah. And yeah. then I was like, when I saw Banksy and it had the execution, I was yeah. at the I was at the first I was at the Banksy show in L.A. The one that's in uh, Exit Through the Gift Shop. I was actually at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. I was in. I was at all the shows, including the Mr. Brainwash show. Oh wow, really? That, that are that I was in the, the, like, the actually, when they yeah, were filming. Yeah. When they were filming. Wow. Yeah, my boy, my wow. best buddy is like they interview him inside the Mr. Brainwash show. I'm standing right next to him. But that first show, I remember going the first day. It was a two-day show. It was the day that Banksy actually brought the painted elephant in. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And there was like, because the second you day. You were there, there. <laughs> I was there, there. The second there, day, there. they it was, but there was only like, I remember going in there, there was maybe 70 people in there total in this huge mm -hmm. warehouse, right? Mm -hmm. And like uh, Macaulay Culkin was in there and like mm -hmm. some, you know what I mean? Like some celebs and stuff. Most people had not been following this thing. Then he brought the elephant in and it was all over the news. And the next day it was like yeah. around around oh, the block. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But I, re I remember, I knew Banksy. I had seen like work from him. There had been some stuff that he had done in, in LA. I knew street artists. But walking in and being in front of the installations, the, and then when he brought the elephant out, I was just like, "Yeah." I just when he he had the Paris Hilton CDs with the cockroaches running around him, and I was just oh, like, man. "Yo, what?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah, undeniable. So, undeniable. Undeniable. And so and so, people have really lost a sense of that because again, mm -hmm. the glut of information, and and I mean, really, this is the spirit of Protestantism where. Now that everyone's a pope, there's right. no there's no ability to to do anything. There's no right. ability to, to navigate anything. There's no ability to discern anything. Mm. So people don't understand that like Ye is actually an artist. Yes. Like like in that old archetype. One of the greats. One of the One, greats. Yeah. Because yeah. he's an artist in that old archetype. So people don't know how to reconcile the fact that on the one hand, He's methodical mm -hmm. and he's deliberate, but also impulsive and given over to, you know, just brashness. And like, 
sure to whatever degree how much is like stage how much is in character like you're saying like like who knows but the point is is like if you understand the artist you understand what an artist is like in that old sense yes. that people don't have anymore that's i think that's part of the reason why people are so confused about him is because they don't know what an artist is like because mm-hmm. because again like everyone's an artist right and so no one's an artist so so i think that's a huge thing to kind of help untangle the the chaos you know what i mean that we're, that we're mm-hmm. seeing the but. the this is this working it out in public is reminding me of the first time that i went in to the picasso gallery in moma in new york mm. and walking through his periods mm-hmm. and seeing mm-hmm. how you know it goes from just like very like realistic and then you see it starting to come into, and you're like, oh, I see Picasso emerging. Yeah. You like, you're seeing Picasso emerge. Right. And it's that is such a mind blowing, like, they, it's it's a brilliant, like, the installation yeah, well, there I mean, is obviously brilliant that they showed that. Well, forgive you know? me, forgive me. I mean, this is part of the problem, right? Because, like, Okay, those of us, you know, artists who, you know, artists, art school, whatever the case is, like people like, oh, I, I've heard this so many times, oh, Picasso, whatever, I could do that. I just, you just, I used to chuckle, now I just ignore people, because I'm like, when that guy, he wasn't even an adult yet, mm-hmm. he he was able to execute illustration and painting so well, his father, who was, an, who was a painting instructor, quit painting. Like, like yeah. people don't, People don't understand that. And so they just look at the thing and in their ignorance and their hubris, they think whatever, which gets me back to this whole thing in regards of, again, because people have iPhones and they can snap mm-hmm. incredible pictures mm-hmm. and they can make stuff on, you know, I, I too, or on um, GarageBand. They can do all these things and they think like, oh yeah, I, oh, I, I can do that. I can do that, whatever. And and that that type of attitude is the problem. But let me, let me just let me just say this. He also suffers from that, which is that's what we're just saying, right? Mm-hmm. It's like the problem for Ye is okay, that's great. You're this artist, want to give that to you, all that stuff, whatever. But that doesn't mean that you know what you're doing spiritually. That doesn't yes. mean that you that you you know what I mean. And and he has no guidance. He has he has no guidance. So I'm sure on the one hand, it's like who can I trust? But on the other hand, there's just hubris there. And his mm-hmm. hubris is the same thing everyone else suffers from. It's like I've dealt with this my whole Christian life in regards of talking with people. And it's just kind of like, I've just heard this so many times. It's like, I think this and that, you know, and I'll say to people, so you want to just throw Jesus in your kind of like pantheon of everything else you believe? Well, yeah, I can, you know, people think that like people think the whole Pope thing, whatever I say or feel about religion or spirituality is valid. And it's not, Mm -hmm. It, it, it's just not, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You have no qualification. And I'm not even talking about having a piece of paper, which right. I got pieces of paper, but that's right. not it. You know what I mean? And that, <laughs> that that's the thing about, about Ye is like, he thinks that he's qualified to navigate the, these spiritual waters, which includes history. History is a spiritual discipline. You know what I mean? To, oh, for sure. To, be able to read and decipher and interpret history, it takes a spiritual lens and he doesn't, he doesn't have that he doesn't have that qualification you know what i mean it isn't he doesn't have the guidance so that's that's the weird confusion that we're all witnessing in real time you know i mean his he he i i, I think this thing has to fall apart spectacularly for him like and it and it seems like he's he's his his particular kind of fame um is like anti-fragile because he's sort of known as somebody who's going to do wild stuff and like who is going to go against the grain who's going to be blasphemous who's going to do all of these things and that's part of his art so it's kind of this anti-fragile thing and so it's like well he's not orthodox here's what i mean by that right 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 like right like Unless you're he's like, unorthodox. He's, he's unorthodox, unorthodox. Right? He's unorthodox. <laughs> right. He, he has no he doesn't have a he, he doesn't have a mindset of the tradition, like to mm-hmm. say, like, no, 
the, your passions. You have to quell your passions, like mm -hmm. sobriety, prelist. He doesn't have any context for that. So it's just, it, and so, so put in the background, which whatever, like, you know, again, there's the whole cultural thing. Well, it's like, mm -hmm. well, being African-American, it's like, boom, the quote unquote apostolic stuff, Pentecostal, mm -hmm. like all of the faults there and the quote unquote black church tradition, he's, he's dead center of it. And it's tough because mm -hmm. he's calling out all these things in regards to the culture, you know what I'm saying? But like, at the same time, the, the real problem with the culture is the culture is where it's at. Black culture is where it's at because of these spiritual religious issues. Yes. Period. Yes. Period. If you fix those issues, then you yes. fix the culture. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Royal Path. I'm your host, Andrew, and tonight I'm going to ask Father and Cyprian, uh, what is your guys' favorite Christmas song? Like, what's like a, like, not not just like a, oh, this is nice, you know, like, no, like, what's an, what's a song that actually, like, like, does it for you? You know what I mean? Well, King Lutz Mm-hmm. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Um, any particular version? Uh, the more Baroque and medieval sounding, the better. Okay. Okay. What about you, Cyprian? I'm going to go so obscure. I, I'm going to go so obscure, but someone can look this up and maybe you can find it and stick it on uh, Spotify. Okay. My stepfather, who was from Missouri, every Christmas would play. I have no idea who this is by, and I should probably look it up. I'm pretty sure that the title is Another Homemade Christmas in Kentucky. Okay. This song has brought me to tears for Kentucky years. Homemade Christmas by Kenny Rogers. It could be. I mean, it could be that Kenny era. Rogers. That's that you're from that Kenny Rogers era. It could be Kenny Rogers. Oh man. If you just put grab some eggnog. <laughs> sit in front of the fire and turn this song on. Did they talk about shutting down the mine last summer? We're getting by on welfare. Yep, sounds like that. And the and the the hook is something like it's just another homemade Christmas in Kentucky, just some odds and ends I fashioned with my heart and with my hands. That's it. That's Woo! it. It's on the list. Woo! <laughs> Man, okay. Woo! Okay. <laughs> it's gonna get you. It's gonna get you. <laughs> Love it. What about you, Andrew? Um, I don't think that anything. Well, my favorite song, without a doubt, is um, "Holly Jolly Christmas" by Burl mm, Ives. Um, Love it. But then I, I don't think anything is ever really gonna top Nat King Cole. Um, mm. his Christmas album is pretty much the best. Um, and I'm a Christmas music. I'm a I'm a I'm a lover. I'm an appreciator of Christmas music. I think that like when it's good, it's really really good, and when it's bad, it's really really bad. Like the waitresses Christmas rapping. That song is really terrible. I mean, it's kind of fun, terrible, but it's pretty terrible. Um, oh, that's gonna go on the list too. Now that's gonna go on the playlist. So, How about Christmas time in Hollis, Queens, Run DMC. Um, oh. Okay. Yeah. I haven't heard that, but oh, I'm, I'm going to check it out now. I'm going to yeah. check it out. I'm just, uh, that's, a, that's, that's from that age of hip hop when it was just fun. That's what I miss. I mean, yeah, that's, it was just fun. Beastie Boys and, you were know, part of that I know era. you guys are getting ready to get into it because I was here for the past, you know, the, the previous conversation. <laughs> um, but I was talking about it with this guy at my work who's like a, uh, really, um, I don't know, like he's just like a really well put together, very articulate, like black dude who just is like really like, no, I went to Morehouse, 
this is mm. my thing like i'm i'm very well versed on like on civil rights and blah 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 and he was basically talking about kanye and he was talking about hip hop and he was talking about all that different kind of stuff and like he kept trying to like talk to me about these different albums to check out and I don't know, I'm not like a hip hop dude. I really love hip hop, like the stuff that I do listen to. But like you kind of lost me when they stopped like sampling like acoustic instruments, when it started to become more electronic and more about the 808 and stuff like that. I like it. Kanye but... was uh, Kanye's part of the reason that happened. I mean, uh, he was the sample king. Well, I mean, like I would his, his first that, two albums. But... Oh, dude. I mean, his have you listened? Have you listened to Paul's Boutique by Beastie Boys? Fair enough. Fair enough. But what I'm saying is that the the time that Kanye is doing it, I'm not talking about like what's the yes, that's the that's the golden age, right? Yeah, but that's so that's, that's, that's what I'm referencing. Age. At a certain point, like Wu Tang's still doing it. I'm sure there's some underground hip hop artists that are still doing it. Yeah. But if like the further you get away from like a keyboard and like like just like a drum machine and stuff like that. I'm more comfortable with it. That doesn't mean it's bad. It doesn't mean I can't get into it. Mm. But it means that like I am always just a little bit more comfortable when they're sampling like actual like music done with actual like acoustic instruments and stuff. I just always feel more comfortable with it. So what well, I'm trying to say there's is two, there's two things there, though, right? There's two things because where like Wu-Tang. So, so there was the evolution where Wu-Tang went. And it was also the same same place, interestingly enough, because it's gangster rap, but it's the production is incredible is DJ quick went to the same thing is that those guys ended up hiring studio musicians or orchestras mm -hmm. to come in and because they couldn't find the records. Yeah. Right. So they needed the freedom, but Kanye that's Kanye did 808s and heartbreak. And that was basically what he was like, I'm gonna do it myself. Well, that was where the, what the move went to. He was like, I'm not a musician, but I'm a producer. I'm gonna do it myself. That's legit. Like that's legit. Yeah. And like the same with Beastie Boys, they blew a bunch of money going in to check your head. Oh, that's so right. They just decided to learn the instruments so that they yep. can make the samples that they wanted instead of yep. like looking for the samples that they and that's like that's just where I get more comfortable. Like that's just like the stuff that I tend to like. So what I'm trying to say is is I could definitely see myself checking out a run DMC song. Like I could definitely check see myself oh, yeah. checking that out. But like because that's that's the part of hip-hop that i'm the most comfortable with and i mean i do there's a little bit like one night i went to go see father father's sons at a father son at a baseball game and father was yelling blue flowers for some reason i don't know why but he just kept yelling blue flowers and I was dr like, oh, octagon like dr octagon Ooh, wow like, what an album man. yeah no, that's a it's that a that album. album in terms of like a a concept art album yeah Bear Witness is like one of the sickest man. tracks I've ever heard. Like Bear Witness, just like I think that it just crushes. You know, you it. know what's funny that it's funny that you brought up Doctor Octagon because it it was not too long ago that I was thinking, oh, you know, I was just thinking about the music we talk about on the show, and I was driving back to my house, and it was like I was thinking about Doctor Octagon, and I was like, I probably shouldn't bring that. I probably shouldn't bring Dr. Octagon up on the show. I was like, oh. that's a little, that might be a little good. too far out He's there. good. Like maybe, <laughs> yeah, cool Keith. Yeah. maybe, I, but maybe I don't want to, yeah. I, maybe I don't want to push people in the cool Keith direction. I Just don't know. that album, stick on that album and don't follow that guy. He's weird. He, he's yeah, like very, like, very, very uh, shamanistic, very shamanistic, yes. very tribal, very like, uh, but in the vein of, if you're talking about, Undeni when you're like undeniable art that dr octagon mm -hmm. album oh yeah is the, it, you turn it on and you're like i don't care what kind of music you, well, see, like. you I mean, know that, immediately that it's art. Yeah, you know that, it immediately. i mean it, it goes it goes back to that point we're talking about with artists it's like it doesn't really matter genre form whatever it's going to be mm -hmm. not even like just genre of music but like medium like mm -hmm. there's people who are creative and create and then there's artists and, yeah. and that, that term artist, that's what we were saying earlier. Like that's what's been lost. Like people don't know what that means. People people cannot recognize an artist anymore. You is know? it is it in is it that it's inspired and it's not derivative? 
it's, like is that is that a part of it like what is well it? well i would i would say not necessarily because i mean like you know hey picasso every great artist steals you know like sure, the sure, derivative sure. aspect of it is part of the genius is being able to like know what you're taking from and that you're actually taking from someone because only the fool mm. it, it, it's like right it's like what's the difference between a scientist and a sorcerer the sorcerer is honest yeah you know? Like mm. only only a fool thinks that he's like making something ex nihilo, you know what I mean? Like that's yeah. that, that's. So not, is it is it taste? It's taste. It's taste, and the genius, the spirit of it is like, how do you arrange the thing, and mm. and the understanding of how of how you arrange the thing, that's where that the fingerprint kind of comes in, you know what I mean? But but there's but it but it's the totality. Mm. Because because there truly is the kind of like disposition, personality, archetype, uh, you know, character class, like however you want to like look at it of like the artist. And and like that's what I'm trying to say is again, you know, we don't have guilds anymore. We don't have uh, a caste system where like, you know, people like you are a carpenter, you are you know uh, a pipe fitter or whatever like we do but like not really you know um but in the sense of an artist people don't know what that means anymore because even people in subculture it's like the glut of information that's caused people to not be able to really recognize i mean what's crazy to me is you know i'll pop something up like something will kind of come up like punk rock nba and, and i'll see like what in the world are these people talking about and then like like, like I remember so I was looking for something to send someone to my kids. I was looking for something to send to my kid's sister and I was looking for a certain kind of image. I was like, oh, I wonder if I can find a baby and a like black, whatever thing, whatever. Cause she just, she just uh, has her child, whatever. And so I was like, oh, so I typed in baby goth cause my kid sister is a goth, you know? So I wanted to like send her this thing and this weird want to be Billie Eilish like thing popped up called baby goth and baby goth is some artist, some you know whatever and there's just there is a sea there's a myriad of these you know thank you hot topic like like cut and paste stamp like artists right it's like real that's mediocre. Kind of what I'm talking about and it, and it goes across the board it's all the terrible trap artists and it's all it's just it's just it's everything artists like even the term artists like we should just call them performers you know because they're not artists right that word that's a much know. better term yeah the word word. performers that's, i think it doesn't mean anything anymore i think Cipri artists. i think cyprian brought up an interesting point because like this is what i've been struggling with is like so much um of culture is like it's like a rehashing and i'm i'm really i'm just gonna say this straight off the bat i'm really not in the league of you guys i'm in the i'm not an artist like i understand the creative process and all that stuff but i'm not in the same league as you guys but i'm just gonna say my my limited interaction with what's happening is is that art has become so um i don't really like using this word because i think it makes me sound a little bit um like loofy doofy like it's it's so pastiche it just is, mm -hmm. is a repeating over and over and over again. So it's like there is no new culture. Culture is just constantly rehashed and pre packaged and like repackaged as where it once might have been edgy, might have been pushing the line, might have been pushing the boundaries. Now it's repackaged as something safe. Like Father was saying, like the hot topic mm -hmm. thing. So I don't even know if we're covering any new ground. I think we're kind of just going over. You're saying I mean, with like, art, with art, there's no new ground? maybe i i don't know i don't well, the know question, the question is was there ever new ground well what's the well the question is is that even a, is that even a thing and i would yeah. argue that's not the thing the purpose of art is not to discover quote unquote new ground because that's the thing about an artist is an artist discovers quote unquote something new but not because they're looking for the new thing mm -hmm. to do see mm -hmm. that that's why but quote unquote it's not even art, quote unquote expression. That's that's even better. Quote unquote expression for the last, you know, 20 years now probably is is it's in this very um anthropic, I don't know if that's the right word. It's like it, it's characterized by anthropy, 
it is pastiche like because what's happened is is it's this it's it's this inbred cycle that's just it's decay right decay it's decay it's something by entropy it's like it's yeah it's, it's, it's okay just decaying on itself and so the thing is is that because when you make being edgy the goal then there's, you know what i mean you worry there, a lot. there's nothing yeah. left there's no blood there's no it's it, you see what i'm saying there's no blood like True artists, their thing isn't like whatever you think their thing is, that wasn't their thing. Sure. You know, their thing wasn't to be like, I want to be whatever, you know. And 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 this is part of the problem is that 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 understanding of truth and beauty and goodness, however you understood it, not not and not in a weird relativistic sense, not in like, well, this is my truth, that's your truth, not like that, but in the sense of this is where I'm at and I'm looking to grab and, uh, and perceive truth as I can. Right. That's but an, an artist is never going to have, forgive me, Father, if for an artist, if you're speaking with an artist, and I've been lucky and blessed enough in my life to have been surrounded by artists for so many years, which now I realize how little I took it so for granted because I was so used to it. You know what I mean? But now, now it's like, why didn't you spend more time absorbing? But it's like every time I've spoken to an artist about truth or about beauty, it has been so objective and they have been so sure in terms of what has come out of their mouth be from experience mm -hmm. that they said, no, this is what truth, at least as they understood it at that they moment, understood it. at that moment, as right? They They're like, it. no, right. this That's is it. Key. This is what's true. Right. As I've experienced it, this is what's beautiful as I know it to be. And that's it. I don't need to hear anything more from anybody. Right. This is that's it. that's that's the difference. And so I'll give you a great like localized example. Like, uh, I mean, my whole life has been this like pursuit of this. And I remember it was uh, you know, I came up in a time like I was at I was at a very sweet spot with tattooing, right? Um, I remember the guys who apprenticed me, it was like there was a conversation of like kind of like being the a last of a generation where it was, you know, grimy and all these things were going on because then kind of quote, quote unquote, you know, art school people were coming into the industry. I mean, this is, this is before Miami Inc. You know what I mean? Which was a big shift, like before the exposure, right? Exposure is what changed the tattoo community. So, but you had these moments, this kind of like second, generation of quote unquote fine art you know being brought in to find some sort of like synergy and synthesis with the tattoo world so Would this like, be like kat von d like, like sort of what she yeah, represented before that. so like okay I'm before talking, that okay like, like a guy like philip blue okay and like jack irons these guys and so like they're bringing in this art right and then there's even like graffiti artists like grime and these people like they're bringing this stuff in and Fine art is kind of like it, but but it's it it isn't this um pretentious, ostentatious, like it's 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 literally like this is the development of pursuing something, the love of tattooing. You it's still scummy. There's nothing, there's nothing like popular about it at this point. And I remember, you know, this is the time I'm, I'm this is the these are the years I'm being apprenticed and kind of coming in. Is this like mid '90s, Father? Forgive me. This is mid '90s. This is okay. mid I re I re I recall. This is mid '90s, yeah. right? This is mid '90s, and so as as you come out of that, then you started having like art shows kind of popping up in studios and stuff. And I remember the studio that I was working at, the one I was at for like a really long time, and like there was an art show there. And I remember, you know, I asked my wife to come, and it was so clear as day. It was like all this stuff was there you know all these different artists were there tattoo artists blah, blah blah and my wife you know we met in college right we met in art we met in art class and so we 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 have this bond over art you know what i mean like art art you know and just being artists and i remember she walked in and it was like there's all these incredible uh technicians you know what i mean they could they could execute the illustration was clean all this stuff right and there was this one guy this guy greg this guy was great he was a total spaz great guy um but like he wasn't like he wasn't the greatest you know what i'm saying his his execution all that stuff but 
his piece, he made this one piece, which was like, it, it was really interesting. And her and I both were like, that's like the piece, right? And it was the one that everyone was kind of like not into because it it wasn't filling the niche of like what everyone thought it should. But I'm, what I'm trying to get at is this. We were talking and she was like, I, you know, it's so weird how there's all these people, you know, these tattoo artists trying to be artists, but it's so devoid of any soul. It's so devoid. It's just like, you know, you know, adult warning. It's just, she's like, it's just like masturbation. And I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. because it's just for the sake of like, look at the pretty pic and look at the pretty picture I can do. And what it was, here's what it is. His painting had this whole thing to do with like his like sadness over the death of his dad. It's kind of like nostalgia, of, like being a young cowboy, all this thing, whatever. All this other stuff was like, this looks cool. I'm going to take this gory chick and mash it with this like tiger guy and do whatever. And it's no different really in this sense of a lot of the shock stuff that you're seeing. It's like, there's no pursuit of anything true in it. It's yeah. it's just a purely, it, it's performance. It's masturbatory. It's like, it's obscene in that sense. It, it's completely vapid, right? That movement is what people look at as art now. Like they go like, oh, give me cool pictures. Give me this, give me that. Like, let's mash some edgy stuff together. And it's like, let's be edgy for the sake of being edgy. And so that movement, right? that movement began to really infuse popular culture because from there, from that place, then you had your Miami ink and then like it becomes exposed and then people want to be edgy. Everyone wants to be the bad boy or what you see what I'm saying? But it's like, you want to be the bad boy, but you didn't go through the bad boy stuff. Sure. You know what I mean? Like you want the look of being bad boy. Then, you know, thank you sons of anarchy and all this other stuff, all this garbage, all this garbage, which takes aspects of, certain subcultures which, which existed for a reason those those aesthetics of those cultures developed out of a certain context it wasn't everything's inversed right everything's about the show i want to look like this so therefore i have to go know, buy this and this and this and this and this and, and that's why you can see well those who have eyes to see they can see through this stuff and and also you know conversely or maybe inversely you see things like that's why that's why again getting back to yay it's like no yay is an artist and like i'm not even like whatever but like that's why he sticks because there is something there being him he's actually an artist in this old archetype that that we're talking about right but there's so there's such a lack of context for people to discern these things but the lack of context is made worse with the fact that everyone has the authority. So because they, have, because they have a platform and because they're able to look something up on Wikipedia or do whatever. The, cri the critic sphere. The critic the critics sphere. The critic yeah. sphere, which is so terrible. And I think Cyprian yeah. and I talked about that before in another episode is <clears throat> suddenly everybody has like a one-on-one grasp of like criticism being a critique or a critic so they go through and they think well they want to have the most interesting thing to say so they want to have you know the the hot take on something and it's most most of the time it's negative 13 reasons why your favorite show sucks you know it's like okay cool whatever um but do, father do you ever think that this is probably gonna be a dumb question but it's never stopped me before do you think that there's like there's like a funnel of like creative ideas and creative juice that's flowing and it's just stretched so thin now. And that's maybe why some of it's vapid. No, like maybe... no, I don't actually, I don't. I think what it is is people don't care. People aren't pursuing truth. So the, what makes an artist an artist is authenticity. Yeah. It's authenticity. It's, even if they're wrong, they tried their best to express yeah. it as they saw it. Yeah. But it's authentic authenticity because it's the authentic pursuit of truth. Sure, which involves and, suffering, and no one wants and that. And truth, so. well, because Christ is truth. Right? Yeah, and it's and and this father goes to and which it is, is why been, Woven Hands' latest album sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been this has been ringing in my ear since you said it on this show, and I've just it's played itself out so many times, and I've said it back to people, but seek wisdom, find Christ. 
Mm-hmm. Like this really, and and I think that it's the reason why, one of the most powerful things about it is that it's made me much more, the term's not empathetic, but I don't know what it is. It's it's both convicted me, mm-hmm. right? But it's ma- of my, it's made me less judgmental because it's like, like you say, like somebody, somebody working it out. What I'm looking for is I'm like, wait, are they seeking truth? Because if they're seeking truth, I'm like, well, let them keep seeking truth. They're going to find Christ. Let them just keep seeking wisdom. They're going to find, find Christ. Like they're screwing up now, but God knows that I was screwing up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like they, most, of, most of the people who I would be judgmental of have not screwed up as bad as me, but I know that I was searching for truth. And still I am, know that I was, and of, still, still and are. still am in the sense of, you know, knowing that Christ is the truth, but like now plumbing his unfathomable depths, which is where we can still be like, there's always room for being like, okay, I didn't know. Okay, forgive me. You know what I mean? But like that, I think, I think that's the other part of this, which is difficult for people to kind of get a hold of. Like, you know, I, I've had some people be like kind of confused or like, you know, they don't, they don't phrase it this way, but they'll be like, how come sometimes you're so willing to help or so willing to be, you're so open. And then other times it's like, you can't be bothered. And I'm like, I'll tell you the secret. If you feel like I can't be bothered with you, it's because I'm discerning. You don't really want to know the truth. You you're looking for your answer that you want. You know what I mean? You're looking for something based upon what you want. Uh, Oh boy. Oh, you you know know what? That's the moment when I say best of luck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yep. I know exactly yep. what you're saying. That's it. That's ex- that's exactly it. That's why I'm like, oh, okay, maybe bless. You know what I mean? God bless you. Whatever. Like, that's exactly it. Because I'm like, oh man, you know, there's nothing that can be said at at that point. You know what I mean? But that that's a huge difference between someone who's honestly struggling, and it's like, hey, you're so wrong, but I can tell that you you you're actually trying, you're authentically wrong. It isn't just about you're wanting your own thing. And and that's what I see that. That's what I see through all of the shenanigans with Kanye. I see there's at least a, a mustard seed of like working the thing out. Like I, like what is going on here? You know what I, I think mean? there's more than a mustard seed father. Well, I'm just trying to be sober. I'm just trying to be conservative. Right. I agree. I think there is a mustard seed, but I also recognize that part of the, what were we saying? Like you, you kind of know your character yes. and like you go into character and it's like, it's even on a, on a imperceptible level. It's like, mm-hmm. we all have it. You know what I mean? Like everyone has it. It's, it's like, uh, you just have this, I mean, if you've ever performed like a good, perform, like if you perform and you're just natural, it's like you have your persona that no one even knows, but you know, like, you hit it and like that's that's the thing you know what i'm saying when you're presenting that's the headspace you get into to to get the job done i don't see that as being duplicitous i don't see that as being inauthentic i just see it's like it's it's the work clothes that you throw on you know what i mean in regards of your psyche it's your it's your robes it's your it's your vestments it's your vestments it's your vestments and you put them on but who are you serving I think that's that was always that's the question for me, right? Because like when I was doing my thing, I definitely had my vestments and I treated them like vestments. Mm-hmm. You know, when I look, I had a special way of getting dressed ritualistically and the whole nine and the way that things were set up and prepared. And like that was the whole thing. But, but who was cadence. I serving? All right. Even cadence, everything. That's what I'm trying to say. Everything. Yes. Your cadence, how yes. you do whatever. So what people may not even realize is like, you know, yay, walking off of Tim Cast tonight. Like I didn't see it yet, but like, you know, I've caught that much of it. Like he's he's I'm not I would not go I wouldn't put it past the fact that he's doing that in like it's imperceptible to him. Like he doesn't know about the passions, right? The you when you the passions make you passive to that passion. Like that's how it works. So it's like he's a man driven by his passions, obviously clearly so it's like he's not even aware necessarily in that sense and when he comes to of course he's gonna he's gonna try to save face and be like well blah 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 and then you know milo milo whatever he's gonna be like yeah blah 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 this and that let's spin it for whatever all that stuff is there all the machinations can be there that doesn't negate what we're saying in regards of like 
what's going on and people because that's how human beings work you know what well, I mean? and it's i think the working it out thing father forgive me i like i think the working it out thing is part of that like there was probably there's probably been a host of things that he's thought to himself i'm sure that he's rewatched every single one of his contentious big interviews that he's done i'm sure knowing him he's probably rewatched it each one a hundred times each yeah right probably back to back for days at a time right a analyzing everything that he he's a producer yeah you know what i mean <laughs> anybody who's who's produced music knows you're gonna hear your song back to yourself thousands of times any mm -hmm. given song right and you're gonna tweak it and you're gonna do whatever that's just what he does i'm sure that there are many times that he was watching that where he was like i could have walked off right there yeah would that have been better and i'm sure that he's ran it in his head of like hmm if i walked off right there how would that have changed this whole thing? How would that have been perceived? How would that have come across, right? Like, so he's producing, you, you know, he's a producer in the moment. He's per performing in the moment. And it's like, now, and now he's got Milo. Now the, he's got Milo, you know? <laughs> right, right. Now he's got Milo. And the thing is, is like, again, um, he's, he's, he's a human being who's working it out, who has no leadership. Clearly, he has no guide. He has no spiritual guide. So he's playing with forces also that he's not even aware of. He's playing with forces that he's not even aware of. And so how hard do you think it would be realistically to contact him, Father? I'm just saying for you, Father, to like yeah. it can't be that terribly I, I have a feeling yes. that at some point there those two will have a conversation. It, that I, I have I have had that feeling for a long time. I'm just Lord Jesus, please. You know, I just if I could. With, get 10 minutes yeah with god's help if if i could get if i could get 15 minutes if i could get 15 minutes with god's help i think we could turn that into 30 and then that 30 i just you know what i mean because the other thing too is like there's all these pieces and again it's christ right like they have this platform like today you know like that thing came out today Milo was like, boom, 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 put Jesus Christ first, yada, yada. And I'm like, hey, check this out, you know. Um, and this is, you know, real path moment. It's like, if if these cats are running on this platform, you know, like I said, it, I said it earlier in threads, like, I got room on the lawn for a sign, right? And the reason being is, the reason being is, is I can overlook all of their all of their shenanigans and all of their bad theology because of here's the thing there's key things that we can all agree on that they're not even aware of how serious those things are in regards of like big picture stuff like we need to buy some time because unless something really 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 crazy turns around we're headed for something super rough because of you know, these these movements that are being, you know, we're getting into literal Sodom and Gomorrah stuff. Like that's that's what I'm worried about. I'm just being frank. I'm saying it here, right? Breaking news. Like I, I'm worried about that. And I'm worried about the fact that um, you know, I've had these conversations over the last uh I think you and I had one, Andrew, like I think recently, but like people's grandmas and stuff are like kind of like well you know the gays blah blah blah. i don't know if we can get censored for that but like i'm just gonna say it for what it is right like we've come to this place where you you're watching in real time people being worn down and being like well is it really that big of a deal blah 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 and it's like ah that's not yeah. good because what you're seeing is well, that, Father, I'm sorry. So forgive me. The dean of Cambridge saying Jesus could have been a transsexual. Oh, yeah. oh man, yes. Like, I that, mean, what do you? What more do you want? That's a religious. That's a religious school. That's a that's a big hit. That's a that's and, a. I mean, like, that's that's a what do you? A, I mean, what? that's checking a big box in God's like list of smite. Should I, mean, I smite it, or should yeah, I? Yeah, like smite? that 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 article you sent today about. I mean, that dean from Cambridge saying Jesus a transgender body. I was like, oh boy. You know what I mean? And and that's the problem is there's so many Christians who are like, whatever. Like, it's like, I'm like, no, no, it's, it's not whatever, man. Like, and that's part of the problem. So 
with Milo being a repentant, you know what I mean? As I understand it, right? I, someone may send me something like it's not, but like, as I've understood it up until someone corrects me, being, you know, a repentant, um, you know, sodomite, whatever, like, I'm like, okay, like, that's the type of thing that's going to buy us time. And, and I think that's important because here's the thing. We need some sort of, there needs to be some sort of um, medium by which the different aspects of concern, outrage, confusion, like lamenting all the things that are like, all the different approaches that are struggling with what's happening can coalesce to some degree where something can change. Let me, let me try to unpack that. Like when I say medium, what I mean is, in the getting back to like the artist context, medium, like there's an acrylic medium, right? It's like, you 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 understand the term? Does the term make no, sense? It's the I it's the material it's the material that you're using to create the the through which the art is being manifested. Yes, thank okay, you. Okay, so is that how? So is that's the differences between making like a marble statue and like a like a clay pot you know what i mean is that is that what you're saying yeah oh i'm using even a little bit more specific right using a certain type of paint over so, another yeah so in painting right so in painting right if i'm gonna do an acrylic painting right when i say acrylic painting people are like oh you buy a tube of acrylic paint you squeeze it out here's your cadmium red right but the thing is there's an acrylic medium which is neutral it's it's the it's the neutral liquid and it's called medium. That that's its literal term is medium. So it's then, colorless? It's colorless. It's okay. neutral. And then you put your pigments in it to make the paint. Like that's oh, the best okay. way to make it. actually right. So when I say medium, that's what I'm used, that's what I mean by this definition. Like I could see the potential, you know, I could see the potential that means it's gonna happen of this thing this spectacle of being a medium by which all these kind of disparate pieces can can find some sort of coherence right mm -hmm. meaning not just people who are like anti-woke because that's not enough right but people who are like have some sort of authentic legitimate christian sentiment right okay. and i and i'm and i mean and i'm talking ecumenism and i'm talking about being ecumenical not ecumenism and what I mean by that is, um, look, you know, the reality is, is that, you know, uh, I'm going to trust God to work you out, okay. right? But we're getting, to, like, it's getting later than you think. It's getting really late. And, you know, someone is going to say, like, hey, I am from the Trinity. I am from Jesus Christ is God. Good. Okay. You know what I mean? Cool. We can start with that. We can start with that, right? And, and us Orthodox got to kind of like give on that a little bit. That doesn't mean we need to have ecumenical prayer services. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is as a country, right, as a nation, which uh, if you've read any contemporary elders and what they talk about, like what's coming down the pipe for America because of these issues, um, I, I'm wanting some time bought for us. You know, I'm wanting some opportunities. Go ahead. I have I have a question. What why is that not then if we're looking for that person, why is that not Trump? I don't think it's oh, Trump. yeah, yeah. But, so so he so th that's a great point. All like all the concerns about Trump, man, I almost want to go back and pull some stuff up from the other day, right? No, I think that's not a bad videos. idea. Like we, we should play some of those videos that, that were put in the thread because it, to me it's like what we're talking about is exactly why not Trump and exactly why, at least based on that one tweet, which isn't much, right, but whatever, like that tweet that Maya threw out there, it's like he was so explicitly, maybe we can do that tweet, we can find it. Like he was so explicit. Wait, what's the what's the, the Milo tweet about Trump? About Jesus Christ. About oh, let me see. Jesus Christ. Like for let me, let, me, uh, let me grab it. Yeah. I don't have my phone, so. Um, but the thing is, is like that, that's part of the thing because Trump is, it's, it's like looking back on things, he's so 
obviously just antichrist in that sense you know not capital a capital c but it's like so many things were just they're not gaps you know what i mean like i never know what he's doing Huh? It's not ignorance. He knows what he's doing. It's like I I had never realized before, and I won't talk long about this, but I had never realized before part of that thread that Father had sent me was his hands. What he does with his hands a lot, a, a, like a lot of it's like like Crowleyan like hand gestures. I don't know much about it, but like this, there's like this chart breaking down. Like these, he does these things during his speeches when he wants to like emphasize, and he'll like do stuff with his hands. It's like really really weird. And like, I mean, like it's just, yeah, like, like that, like that snake poem. You know what I mean? Yeah. What was I? Don't get it because, like, he's, the snake. Get, he's yeah. the snake. Yeah. Like it, it's like the the reality, and, and and here's how I explain it. You know, God using, and I know the I know the weird like QAnon cats were doing that with like calling him a King Cyrus, but like. You know, God does use wicked kings, but I would put this more in the category of like, hey, you know, I'm not uh, with like Ye and Fuentes and, and Milo. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm not looking for them to like run the church. You know what I mean? I'm not looking to say that they're in the church, but it's like, if we they're need affirming. To buy us like another couple years, please. Yeah. Is this what we're talking about here? Yep, that's the one. So this is from his tut from Gab. Milo said Nick and Ye didn't discredit Trump's 2024 campaign with that dinner meeting. Trump did that himself by having the most boring, low energy announcement speech in history. He did it by continuing to suck the boots of the Jewish powers that be who hate Jesus Christ, hate our country and see all as disposable cattle, according to their holy book. Trump will start putting Jesus Christ first in his campaign. It's funny that he capitalized his his campaign yeah. messaging, hmm. or he or he will be left in the dust of someone who does. It's that simple. We're done putting Jewish interests first. It's time we put Jesus Christ first again in this country. Nothing and no one is going to get in our way to make that happen. I wonder how much of that is performative, though. Yeah, and and that's you know? I, like here, that's what I'm trying to say about the medium. Like, right. The, like that's what I'm trying to say about the medium because again. It's not like I'm like, oh, let's let's all kind of throw them, but like we're getting to a point where you're gonna have to start you're gonna have to something's gonna start cooking one way or the other. You know what I mean? Well, it's the interesting thing about that, Father, is like there's a truce that Milo says there, right? It's that whoever's running. Someone is going to, someone is going to need to put Jesus Christ first. Mm -hmm. Like that's the truth that he says. Right. And it's like, because if not, it's over. Yeah. I think that's what you're saying. Like, this is the, that's, that, that's he's, he's, that's he's, 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 he's surrounded it in all of this Milo stuff. Right. He surrounded this in all of his persona, but the kernel of truth in there is like, if someone doesn't put Jesus Christ first, it's curtains. We're done. Father, that's what you're saying you're seeing is that kernel. That, like, I can work saying. with that kernel. I can that's work with I'm that. Saying. Okay, God that's can work with that kernel. And, and in my mind, hear me out on this, you know, it's like a timestamp moment, I think. This is a lot of what we've been talking about with our project. Like, I'm not saying this is the moment, but I'm saying this is one of those moments where it's like, this is never about us being the critique like what what do we call it the um the, critique the critic sphere. critic sphere the this, critic this sphere. isn't about like this has never been about the critic sphere because I, like i don't i'm i refuse to complain about something if i'm not willing to like put the time in or the effort to change it like another purpose of this project was because it's like no like it's not enough to just sit and complain about it in the shadows gotta throw it out there even if even if we're gonna even if i'm wrong on something that's fine like but I have to put it out there because it's like Things matter now. Like, we can't just, we can't sit back. Here's the thing. Being patient, being wise as a serpent, having prudence, that's mm -hmm. not sitting back and doing nothing. That's being prudent and being patient. That's just as much an action, if not more so, than being brash and- it Takes um, more discipline. Yeah, and, and being impulsive, right? I'm, when I say sit back, I mean just like 
you know, kind of black pill that doesn't matter. Like, it's not okay to do the black pill thing. Like, you can't do that. It's not, it's not right. So, so what I'm saying is this is one of those moments where I'm like, perhaps a window of something is is coming to at least buy some time somehow. I don't know what that looks like, but I'm just I'm saying like I see I see that kernel and I'm willing to acknowledge it because this is what we're this is a moment where it's like hopefully the conversation we've been having with everyone and hopefully that helps them to have conversations with other people is okay more than just five people can say there's a kernel there we'll take the kernel but we're going to be having a real small filter to strain all the other stuff out like that's the world path right being able to be like okay like you know i'm not gonna go full-on drinking your kool-aid but like you know strange bedfellows this is this is a moment the this the sorry andrew the the interesting part about this, just just b b if, before if we if we move sure, forward, go, on the go, thought, go, go, go. Yeah. is when when Ye first, and this was something that I remember about when he first sort of went public with the Sunday service stuff. That one of the things that he kept saying is, and and it was also something that he said uh, with his sort of his run, you know, his 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 other presidential run or whatever, and and when he was talking to people, this is not what you know, this buying some time thing has been, I think, and it's lost now, maybe even to him, but it's been at the underlying um, goal, I think, of what he's been saying, because he was saying we need to pause. I remember him saying these things. We need a pause. When he, the thing that he did in North Carolina, I think, where he was wearing the bulletproof vest and he was talking yeah, and he ended yeah, up yeah. talking, he's, he was talking about a, like, it ended up that was the abortion thing, right? Where he was like, my mom would have aborted me. And that's what got all the news. Yeah. But before that, he was talking about, we need a pause. Yeah. We need it. We're moving towards something yeah. too, fast. too fast. We need a pause. Too we fast. need a pause. We need some time. Too fast. And I, and, and I want to, and this is super important. We start right there because we have to talk about this. The baloney Agia. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, look. Look, I, I want to show you how bad we're at right now. Hey, can we take one second, Father, and explain what that is? That uh, what's yeah, your Bal Balenci Balenci Balenciaga, Balenciaga, the fashion Balenciaga, house. Balenciaga, yeah. right? It's the fashion house. Yeah. So, not everybody knows what this is. Okay, so you're gonna go ahead. It. Go ahead, explain it. Go ahead. Oh, I don't. It was a so. But so Balenciaga is a very like high, high end for people who don't know. A very high end fashion house. Kanye has been associated with them in the past. If you see him wearing those fisherman boots, those are very like, I don't know, multi-thousand dollar Balenciaga oak couture boots, even though they're just fishing boots with the Balenciaga uh, logo on them. But they recently, they've been in, the, people have probably caught it if they've been watching Fox News because they've been being very provocative in their advertising, um, trying to be edgy, like Father said, like edgy for edginess's sake. And Balenciaga has always been that by the way they've always been rather disgusting in the things that they've done and that's and but they also there's also some real artistry to some of the stuff that they've done but they do pride themselves on being very edgy and um this particular one has undertones or overtones or some sort of tone of child pornography and pedophilia and but that's also very edgy right now so it's like this is again like is it edgy for edginess's sake but i'm also noticing that now they're going back they're bringing Maria Abramovich back up again and that she's been associated yeah. with them again. And like, did you send that photo father for the leader, yeah. the, the designer? Yeah. Cyprian, you should check this out. Uh, the, the blonde, the blonde woman with the bloody babies holding the, yeah, bloody babies. she's, she's, but you know, the thing that I want to that I'm just going to like, again, like I know that even if you're doing it in a hot topic way that it still has an effect, but I think that people also need to realize that like, part of Balenciaga's entire game has always been to upset the normies. And this is part of what their that brand like, has always been. Isn't that part of like a nefarious agenda as well? I mean, like, even if it's done in the I name mean, of I shock value, it's still being know. done. And that's the thing, right? It's like, that's, that's the thing. But I think that it's important for people to understand that like, 
perhaps the deeper that they're, I think people need to know that you are participating in the ritual with your outrage. Yeah. I think that's right. the part that people are right. missing. Cause, sure. Cause I'm going to say this gets us to the thing with like the satanic panic in the eighties and all that stuff. Sure. But here's the thing that so many of us come back to is like, yeah, but that was still a thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And like, and, and so this, this is part of the thing is like, uh, you know, I've talked a lot about like my involvement with subculture, but like one of the things I don't talk a lot about, and some people can get the wrong impression, is I, I speak very positively about, you know, because it, I am just a product of it, right? But the one of the things I haven't talked about as openly is like, there's a lot of repentance in that, that people that I'm not explicit about, right? About subculture? About subculture, you know, and there is, there are these aspects of it that are not redemptive. Yeah. Like, like they can't be like, there's, there's aspects of it that are baptized and I, I grab onto them and I can expand them enough to where it can make up a broader, it can feel like it, it fills a broader quantity of it than it actually does, but it's actually fairly small. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's fairly small, but if you can integrate those portions in properly then it seems like it, it because when something's baptized, it, it becomes redemptive, right? Sure. And so it, it begins to affect the whole person. It begins to affect the whole culture. But like the other side of that, which I'm going to take a timer is like, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be repented of. And like, there's movements, like for instance, the kind of like bondage up yours, like that whole thing, that whole like punk, like attitude that's that needs to be repented of i've repented of that mm -hmm. you know what i mean i've repented of that uh orthodoxy is part of that repentance like you can't you can't have that and you know be redeemed like the the only way to really redeem that is you have to now turn that against despicable things and sure. so that's why like that doesn't it doesn't matter if they're being like well we're just being edgy to set the more it's like but what does that mean? You know what I mean? Like, like at this point, and, and that's why in the lens of Christ, it's like, no, like. If you put a pentagram on your shirt, just to be it's still edgy, a pentagram, it's still a you know pentagram. what I mean? It, it, yeah. it, and, and the thing is, is like, this is, this is part of even really now where we're at because, um, you know, it was like that uh, as cringy as it was that unbaptism ceremony that the church of satan was doing a couple months ago remember that you guys yeah. saw that no i didn't see it super cringy super cringy you know a bunch of you know lonely out of shape you know like bad rent fairs you know who are playing satanists you know hail satan and doing oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 as cringy as that is do you think the demons are like well it's just cheesiness it doesn't really count like it doesn't you know what i mean it it seals the heart and blasphemy you know what sure. i'm saying and so i mean that one saint who was an actor who acted like he was baptized and he came out as like oh i'm actually bad like yeah. the rituals yeah. work the yeah. things work and and so i think the thing is is like with these baloney people and like their desire <laughs> outrage like that's part of the clamor and the confusion that the devils use on on a broad scale because cultures can be cultures do become possessed like we're seeing it like yeah. we're seeing you know western and american culture is like in the thralls of possession like sure. a, a, a literal possession you know what i mean and the weird thing that i'm seeing though father forgive me what what i'm what what i'm seeing that is like and i'm seeing this with 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 people that i you know, I, I mean, I would say my my former, certainly in the libertarian sphere, because it seems like libertarians are particularly fixated by this particular since the days of Pizzagate, you know, and Epstein and the whole nine is like the. That and it is exactly a fixation, like and what I see is that there's a fixation, but there's no Christ. Yes. And 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 one of the things that I know there is a Christ. It's just a well, small C Christ. Well, no, there's no, well, there you go. Yeah. But one of the things that I know from my own experience, and this is, goes to exactly what we're talking about, is like, 
if you fixate on this, even if you, because it's trying to draw, because its goal is to evoke outrage, if you fixate and are outraged, you are worshiping. Yes. It's the attention. They and want, and that's and that's what they, they don't the understand. They don't understand that you are actually worshiping this thing because right. because you are not your reaction is not in Christ. Right. Yeah. Your it's, outrage it's, it's is actually in, worship of it's the morality. thing. It's the morality. Yes. yes. Yeah. The morality. yes. And I, just, I understand that. But this is what I'm trying to get at when I said like, but I think this is a, I think we're coming on a moment because of time where yes, the outrage is there, but it's like I think we're I think we're hitting a moment where like that stage we're kind of past that stage and here, here let let me let me tell you why I'm saying this because there comes a there comes a there comes this gap where it's like you know you're there here's this narcissistic person right and you know they're just all about monopolizing the time they're gonna come in and they're gonna like. You know, I, we have to meet right now, right now. You know what I mean? And it's just like, uh, you know what I mean? It's like most people don't know that that's part of like the MO. They don't even know that's part of the MO, right? But like there comes a point where you're just like, okay, you ignore it because you know that you're just going to feed into that, right? Sure. There comes a moment where it's like, actually, I have to shut this down because now it's right, it's right, if right. me ignoring right. it is is not going to um diffuse the situation or starve it out it's actually now going to hit that sweet spot where they become the there there's tyranny now there, sure. there's the sweet spot where it's like it's going to affect other people and so and so I would say this and this may be just me you know I may come back next week and be like yeah I was just riled up whatever maybe I don't know but I'm Right now, where I'm at, I'm like, we're starting to hit a window where it's like, our people, like, I believe God needs us to start saying no more. That That's what I'm trying to say. I don't think it's about just like, you know, like what we've warned in the past about like, don't give it the attention, don't give it the attention. Like, be careful of the temptation on the right. You know what I mean? That's what we've been talking about. I'm just saying, yes, 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 temptation on the right, because look. Just for the record, there is that imperial strain in the tradition that wants to have, you know, you, you know, dignity and power and all those things. And that's all fine. But like, remember, you only know the Christ through his broken, crucified body, period. We don't, we do not access the risen Lord now. You know what I mean? The only, the closest we get to that is in the worship and adoration of him in the liturgy. In, in the public sphere, we we cannot look for him in that in that sphere. I'm just being clear here because I, I want to be re- I oh, really, no, 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 Father, I want you to double down on that. Yeah, I want you I to go be like- really clear on this. Let me be really clear on this, right? I want to be really, really clear on this. The power and the glory and the adoration and the nobility all that good stuff you only can look for it and expect it and find it and 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 trust and freedom and truth in the liturgy in the life of the church in the hierarchy of the church period period full stop full stop not in the state not, not in, in the, the monarchy state, not in the state not in the monarchy not none of that all that is dangerous so i'm just i have to like just to be clear on that right Boom. So there's that piece of that. That's not what I'm talking about right now. What I'm talking about is like, okay, let's just, just say small peanut size the roll path audience. Okay, listen. Yay, Milo, whoever it's gonna be, like they're not the church. They're not church leaders. Like you know what I mean? We the church is our government, right? That that's the thing. However, however, not a but. However, what this is is right. We are a part of. We are in Sodom. We are in Babylon, right? What did Lot do in Sodom? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. 
if we do not lament the sin of Sodom, we will be destroyed with Sodom. Sure. Right? That's the trick with Lot. Right? Why is Lot considered righteous? Because he lamented the sin at the gates. So all I'm saying is, on the one hand, you know, the kind of like tongue-in-cheek putting the sign for Ye and, and Milo 24, what that really means is now's the time where we have to lament this stuff. I don't care if it's shock value. I don't, I don't care if it's whatever. Because when you are playing around, like, it's not funny to, to like, parade children around and do mock satanic rituals and do mock, you know, pedo abductions. That's not funny. That's not, like, the value of that shock of, of outraging the normies, like, that's what the vaccine booster is for. Like, like, who cares? Like, this is something else. This is, I'm not even looking at, you know, Abramovich wannabe lady. I'm looking at the principality in the eye and saying, you will go no further. That's that's what I'm talking about. Because what's happening is people are going to get a taste for it. I'm telling you, like, people are so ignorant and impressionable, and it's only been made, it's the conditioning is, is has people are tenderized meat. They're sure. just receiving all that seasoning and all of that, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you know, the meat. The marinade. The marinade. <laughs> They're receiving the marinade, you know what I mean? So it's like, I was t- I was telling this to to um, Stuart yesterday, like that can that Canadian travel company or whatever that clothing company that's promoting suicide. You see yeah. this? Yeah. What? Yeah. Yo, there's this no, Canadian this. company that's promoting euthanasia to like promote their clothing. It's yeah. insane. It's insane. Like when I think of life, I think yeah, it's super. It's like it's it's super, you know, post hipster. Just like oh, it's like oh my gosh. But the thing is, people are already going to start eating it up. Like and that and that's what I'm trying to say. It's It's like like, how far can we go? Look, man, it's they're like how far do we go here? Look, as a father, right? I don't care if it's. I don't care if Slayer's tongue in cheek. Yeah. I'm not having my 10 year old listen to Slayer. For real. I don't care if it's tongue in cheek. I don't need something to be tongue in like that's not an excuse because the principalities, it's like that's not how this works. If it's tongue in cheek, we're not talking about the same thing. I'm talking about on the principality level. And what's what the thing is, is God's watching. And so what I'm saying is like, we're at that time where I'm like, we need to say like no more so that at least we can buy some time so we don't get just but how do we say how do we say because obviously i mean we have to be wise as serpents in this case right and it's like there's obviously a wrong way to say no more correct right there's a way to say no more that is like it's a battle right Mm -hmm. and so it's like we've got to fight but you know, the thing that I've been hearing over and over from people is that they're like, well, doing something is better than doing nothing. And it's like, that's on its face, not true. Yeah, because but they, they define nothing. They think doing right. I, that, right, like, right, right. About, exactly. Like, exactly. Not, you know, I'm not talking about sitting on your hand. Like, but that doesn't mean you need to be. But, but, but father, forgive me. Forgive me. Yeah. Like some, but sometimes doing nothing actually is better than doing something. If the something that you're doing is going to make it worse. Yes. Well, right? that's prudence. It's, well, yeah, but, exactly. Let me, let me introduce a word to you. Let me okay, introduce a word to everyone's lexicon. Choiceful. Choiceful. Is that a father turbo original? No, no. Okay. No. So. In the Serbian culture, there's this like, uh, this kind of like adage, or there's this this kind of like understanding of you know, young men, but really people need to learn, um, you know, um, being being heroic and being humane, right? Being heroic and being humane. So like, the heroic thing is like saving 
people from aggression and tyranny and self initiative and all this stuff, right? The heroic portion, right? But the humane part is saving others from your aggression and your selfishness. That's choiceful. Choiceful means to like uh, protect others from yourself, right? It's 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 a very very Christian idea. It's a very orthodox idea. Choiceful, sure. right? And so it's like practicing choiceful. Like this is really what you're talking about, Cyprian. It's it's a very unique, uniquely Christian, uniquely Christian uh, and orthodox um, principle. Choiceful. So yes, we need. And people, we don't know that. Like, people don't have this. Like, what? What are you talking about? But like, this is part of. We are so young as a church here in the states, right? Like, we don't have these deep understandings like the older cultures do, which is why we need to be humble and really not like look to have like we need to have our American Pie and AR fifteen church now. That's not, you know what I mean? Because no American is going to teach us about choice vote. Like, but that's what we need. And we, we need that because the prudence of not just swallowing something whole is necessary. But it's also not just not, it's not, it's, it isn't the not doing something because of, again, like I said, being black pilled or being lazy, right? Or like, no, inaction and at, at the very least of keeping yourself from doing the wrong thing is many times what's needed, right? I, I agree with that. And the word for that would be choice bow. So the context there being said, I think that like, okay, we can't even have a rational discussion anymore. Not us, like in our society, like we know this, right? So this is part of the question, like, what do we do? And I think this is where, again, coming around where God isn't gonna leave us without something in regards of like some sense some gesture of being able to say we do we do not acquiesce you know what i mean and the people outside the church god doesn't want to destroy us like you know what i'm saying like he doesn't he doesn't take pleasure in in seeing what's happening but like the thing is it's happening it, it's happening like I don't want to, I don't want to go too far, but like, I'll just say, I've seen some things in the last three weeks kind of being out and about where I'm just like, Lord have mercy, man. It's like, we have to remember it's contagious, man. And maybe even some of the people that we talk with, it's like, I was talking to Papati about this the other night. It's like, they're so like in our circles, um, like if we're Orthodox and like probably if you're listening to this, like you have a pretty tight circle and everyone's kind of hunkered down in the arc, you know, your arc, wherever that is, just step outside a little bit, man. And cause that's what I've been doing the last few weeks. I've been stepping outside. It's bad, man. Andrew said, no, <laughs> Andrew shaking his head. No, <laughs> like, like, forgive me, forgive me. It, it's bad. It's bad. Like it's bad. And, and, and maybe someone would say, and it isn't even just me being like, I have been away from the sunlight. And as soon as you step outside, you know, cloudy days. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about it's bad. We're like. Objectively bad. It's objectively bad. You know what I mean? Like, I'm getting ready to go on a whole tour thing and pushing just like, you've got to pull your kids out of public school. You've got to. Like. You, you've got to there I you, you have to unless you are living like in you know uh Constantine you know Wyoming <laughs> it's just like uh, whatever. and yeah. even then I don't know you know what I mean like it, it it's bad man it's it's really bad and so we're getting to this kind of like critical mass where I'm, this is why I'm saying like man there has to, there's always this third option it's like we're pressed on all sides. We're pressed, but God isn't going to leave us without, you know, until, until he, until he does, until there's that moment where it's just like, yeah, no one cares. That was the thing about Sodom. Like, will you destroy it? If there's 50 people like, no, I won't. Uh, 45, 
40, 35, 30, you know what I mean? It's like, remember Abraham's bargain with God. And it's just like, okay, for the sake of 10 people, like that's what, you know, that's what we're kind of headed towards because we are so few. We are so few and it's getting really, really, it's, we need to have that medium to where, you know, and again, it's going to be, a, it's going to be upon us to not lose ourselves. It's going to be upon us to practice choice, foe. You know what I mean? Because again, yeah, I hear you. Okay. This stuff has got to stop like no more. You know what I mean? Um, but we have to watch to have that self-control to not turn into. So I, so then I, I do kind of want, <laughs> want to hammer down on this just really quick, because I think it's important. Um, this choice, foe. Um, I guess the lack of that and wanting to do something would be kind of what we're seeing from the QAnon crowd is like this like idea of like, well, we got to do something. And here's this guy who's saying he's going to do something. And then um, I wanted to ask, because I just think it's really important. You said that like we need a politician or someone largely to say, well, it needs to be Christ first. And I just got to ask one more time, why is that not Trump? I don't believe it is Trump, but why is that not Trump? Like, why is it not? Because he is claiming. Well, here's, that I'll, his... I'll make it simple. I'll make it simple. Because Trump says, I've never needed to ask God for forgiveness. Sure. That's where you need that discernment. That's where a lot of, you know, forgive me, if you're listening to me and you like Trump, you need to really pay attention to that. Any guy who says, I've never needed to ask God for forgiveness, that's not a Christian. An antichrist. I'm just, I'm yeah. telling you right now. But the second oh, thing is, is an antichrist. Is an, is antichrist. an antichrist, yeah. An antichrist. But the other side of that though is here's here that's the negation. That that's the negative, right? But the but the positive, not positive as in like, haha, that's that's great, but like adding, to, you know, like negative approach, the positive approach of that is when you look at when you look at Milo, I, he's fascinating to me because he is a repentant sodomite. That's a big deal. So when a repentant sodomite, never mind his persona, never mind whatever, is saying like, hey, I've stopped doing this and I'm, I am openly confessing Jesus Christ, whatever, whatever, I get it. You know what I mean? Like, come at me with your comments about, you know, but I'm just saying like, that's the difference. Because a guy like that, I'll let God work out his theology. He's not in the church. He's not in the church, so I don't got to judge him on that sense. I don't, I, you know what I mean? All I know is, like, he was a flaming, like, all out there, whatever thing. And he's now, like... He was he, an evangelist for it. He was an evangelist for it. And so, yes. as I understand it, I, I, I distinctly remember seeing an interview where he was saying, like, I, 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 I'm moving away from that. Yeah. I remember seeing an interview with him. I can't yeah. remember who it was, but... How long ago was it? Like twenty late early twenty one maybe I think. Okay. It might as far been. as I know, he is still that is still the case. You as far I mean? as I know, that is still the. Case. So when I see that, I go like, "Hey man," because it, look, it's no different than me in the real it, well, the real world. It's no different than how I'm dealing with someone in in the flesh, right? You come to me like, "Look, man, I got people who are in the church who they're they don't even got right theology." You know what I mean? who are baptized, like I'm having to work with them. I can be patient with someone who's not in the church, but is trying, you know, you know, you see what I'm saying? Sure. Because that's the trick. Like the other side of that is us trying to be super correct on things, which is what we need to remember this. You got a lot of quote unquote orthodox where their theology is not right either. I'm just like, that's a reality. Like that's part of the work of, of priests is to help, like help people, work through their ignorance and their hubris, which is like the worst combo, right? Where someone is proud and they're ignorant, you know what I mean? Um, and and try to just love them and to help them to come to a place of humility and repentance. That's in the church. That's someone who's baptized and, and living the life of the sacraments. But that's, that's in start. How can we not do more? How, I, I can do, I can, I can definitely extend further for a guy outside the walls of the church, but he's like, I was practicing this. I'm not now. And I'm not doing it because I believe Jesus Christ is God. I'm like, Hey bro, I'll pray for you. And like, you know, 
I'll be waiting for you on the other side here because if this is getting back to our original point earlier, if you're pursuing wisdom, you'll find Christ. I look at that guy and I go like, you don't have the fullness of the faith. You don't have the full picture, but at least you're walking in the right direction. And that's why we, that's one of the big differences between us and like the fundies, like the fundamental evangelical, which is like, you know, say the magic prayer and blah, blah, blah. It's like, ah, like, I was going to say they're just that, like Muslims. They're just like Muslims. They're just like way. Muslims. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, they're, and they don't, and that comes from not knowing God. That comes from knowing about a God and like taking the Bible like it's the Quran. You know what I mean? But like, that's not what, that's not what this is. You know what I mean? But that's such in stark contrast, what you said earlier, father, um, about the, um, taking someone who has ignorance and hubris and loving them until they can get to a place of humility. That's such in stark contrast to the way that like ignorance and hubris is handled outside the church as well. Like if someone's on social media and they say some whack stuff or whatever, I don't know, on either side, like they're just berated. They're berated until Burn like, death. yeah, exactly. So <clears throat> I think, I think that that is one of the many other ways that Christ has like inverted that whole process and then, and made it like more about a path of humility and recognizing you know, you're just wrong. And that's like one of my favorite things. One of my favorite sentences is, I don't know. And one of my favorite, my other favorite sentences, oh, I was wrong about that. I don't know what I'm talking about. I hardly ever really know what I'm talking about. So, I mean, look, that, that's an interesting thing because like uh, Cyprian was just saying like, hey, he's heard Yay be like, I was wrong on that, actually. And even if he wasn't right on his correction, he's willing to say I was wrong. I don't think I've ever heard Trump say that. I don't think you'll hear Trump say that. You know no. what I mean? And never that's, ever never and that's one of the big things like uh my girl candace owens who that's another person i wish i could get 15 minutes with like she was commenting on like how trump started like putting her on blast for some things about like this is a great one like i wish man i hope someone gets woken up from the spell uh with with trump like don't forget that cat was all about operation warp speed yes like, and yes. and she's basically, you know, she was basically like, hey, like your base isn't down with this. You know what I mean? So and he lost it on her, we started to call her out. Like, that's part of the problem. You know what I mean? Like, that's part of the problem. That and that just should be some basic Christian sense of being able to, to be not even corrected, but at least be like challenged on something without completely losing burning. your mind yeah, yeah. well yeah. there is so, there this is this is really this is really making me uh making me think father this conversation and I, I think what you said about the a filter right that it's like there is something there there is an opportunity this kanye milo and then even nick fuentes yeah. like even the fact that a avowed white supremacist like blatant and unapologetic racist right is rolling around with Kanye West for me what I find interesting about this whole thing and I'm realizing what I haven't seen in this is nobody has been like guys what's going on mm -hmm. like aren't you supposed to be a racist mm -hmm. like what's What's the deal? What's happening? As opposed to it being like Kanye's running around with a white supremacist. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Right. Because I mean, from a Christian standpoint, it's like, oh, well, maybe he's not trying to be a white supremacist anymore. And this is this is also kind of what Kanye did when he brought in Marilyn Manson on his last project, right? To where they're like, oh no, Kanye's with Marilyn. And it's like, hold on, but maybe, maybe that this is, is part I mean, of a movement. No. Right. Of both of these people here like are, okay are we curious about this at all like and, and and that's part of the thing is even like us developing change because i was kind of like yo like what's going on with that but then at the same time you know man the man was about to get canceled and so hey man you know getting brought to your rock bottom that's often what it takes for most of us to kind of start saying like well what's what's the deal so i mean it we are in interesting territory and it's definitely not time to go fishing and it's definitely not time to kind of just like turn the brain off and start going with the feelings and the emotions. You know what I mean? It's not the time, but I, but I do think we're, we're seeing, uh, we're seeing something's 
something's happening. It remains to be seen, but it, it's it's definitely one of those things where I'm like, you know, what's moving me right now is not seeing something not what's moving me is not the spectacle of milo and fuentes and yay it's not the spectacle of of, of you know bellagio whatever you know uh what's moving me is you know today i was reading some contemporary elders and i'm just and and all this came out so for me it's just kind of like coalescing but what's moving me is like the it's later than you think and my last, you know, my last three weeks of being out and about and being like, Lord have mercy. Like, because there was this whole sense of, you know, we're all living on the internet now and the internet's all outrage. But if you get out there in real life, it's not that bad. And there's that sense of that too. But my last three weeks have been like, oh, it's it's pretty bad out here. Like, Oh, it's bleeding into the real world, Father. It, it's it's Like that that narrative is an old one. Yeah. Like that narrative, I th- I don't think people saw the shift. I saw it because I'm in that space, like software development, right? And like, I've been in it for, since the beginning, but it's like, there was a time when, oh, here's the real world and here's the online world. And it's like, no, yeah, it's moved. The fact that like, you know, I'm interacting with 20 something year old guys, a lot of them guys, but some women too, all their dating starts online. Yep. Yep. Like they don't even know just even the idea of like, oh, dude, why are just go have a drink somewhere and like just talk to whoever, go do something and me like for 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 me, like in my 20s and 30s, like that was not the thing to do. It's like, oh, I want to go meet somebody. I'm going to go somewhere in the physical world. It's all online now. Yeah. And it's like, well, if your relationship starts there, obviously that's the real world, <laughs> right? Yeah. If you're the place that you're going to go to meet your potential uh, wife, yeah, right? that's, I mean, that place is I the mean, real world. <laughs> I mean, Jimmy Cyprian, I don't want to go dark, but I'm just going to go dark. You know what I mean? Like there's all kinds of behaviors that have become just, it's like, it's shifting the culture of just human beings right it, like well father people talk about the consumption of pornography like in day-to-day conversation now. yeah i mean like it's just it's, nothing like it's like it's nothing and and that's i just want to add that as one more reason why i'm just like no this thing with you know baloney it we have to pay attention to it and it just and it's not even about the outrage of it it's it's about like how it's almost like the litmus test. How desensitized are people? And it seems like people are pretty desensitized, actually. Because my girl Candace was making that point. She's like, where's all... And we obviously we know this, right? Because that's all like virtue signaling. But like, where's all the black square celebrities who are like, yeah, you know what I mean? This and that. It's like, okay, something that's actually disgusting and repugnant happens and like everyone's silent. No one's saying anything. But like, you know, we, we can clap back for like, you know, George Floyd, the drug addict Mason, like get out of here. You know what I mean? So I look at that and I'm like, mm, that's, you know, taking, you know, testing the temperature of the water, like seeing where the wind's blowing. I'm like, that's not good. You know what I mean? Like that. Because it's only going to escalate. It's only going to escalate. And, you know, here's the thing. This is what I'm trying to connect is that people you know what your, your observation is 100 correct people not meeting on uh, you know not meeting in reality anymore people meeting online men having most of their ex- sexual experiences through self-abuse and pornography you know anybody who knows anything about pornography you keep drinking the waters you know you need stronger and stronger drink if you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying like those all those things are connected you know what i mean all that stuff is connected and let's just be really frank this is part of the disinformation thing too about like hey you know the whole q thing that was that's all psyop that's all part of the hegelian dialectic you know what i mean of trying to get you know 
the two opposing sides to, to create the new synthesis. I get all that, right? Father, can we get that for the sound bite about Q? Q is a psyop. Q, Q is not is a sure. Okay. Q, Q is a psyop, <laughs> both in the literal sense and in the spiritual sense. It's all about testing the waters to see like, like what was going on. But like, here's the thing. Check this out. When you go fishing, the chum bait still real fish. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's still real fish. Right. And so, like, I mean, shout out to your man, Alex Jones. I mean, he was I mean, some of us remember the Bohemian Grove stuff in real time. I do. I remember it in real time. You know what I mean? Like that expose, whatever. Like, so all that stuff is is there. Right. That's some of the reason why some of these even became Catholic in the first place. Small C, small C. Right. Uh, it's, it, I mean, I know it was for me, you know, my wife little unknown story my wife introduced me to this chiropractor dr brian and dr brian was like hey you know prod around some questions and the only reason why i was able to answer some stuff was two things i listened to art bell and shout out to deacon mike tubbs you know deacon mike tubbs is the one of the guys who kind of initiated me into um the alex jones kind of like you know world uh in the 90s so it's like I was able to answer some questions. And then Dr. Brian was like, check this book out, slid me this book. I read this book, Hope for the Wicked. And it was just like, bang. It was like, he was my Morpheus in some regards. You know what I mean? It, was, it wasn't the church, but he was my Morpheus in some regards because that, that unlocked the key for me to being like, whoa, Protestantism, this is a thing. Whoa, Protestantism is essentially masonry whoa mm -hmm. and then it was like from there i was i had all those all those locks of soul scriptura and all that stuff was just like shattered and then it was like okay well what and then boom i was ready for orthodoxy had that encounter with the icon the rest is history but that's what i'm saying like all this stuff is like near and dear to me because i've been knowing about all this stuff like like none of this is this stuff was like same yeah same you know what i mean like it's that before means. pizza gate pizza gates like i psh, i'm like pizza gate what it's like oh yeah like duh of course there's like child leg sacrifice on stuff you know what i'm saying so, and i think father forgive me like for for me this is probably and this is this conversation has been very good for me because i can see myself because i'm now seeing it's now becoming conscious to me you know maybe i haven't let this stuff bother me enough mm -hmm because of exactly what you just said because i'm like well yeah i mean this is out there mm -hmm. it's been out there mm -hmm. but no it hasn't been out there yeah. not like this it hasn't yeah. <laughs> like but i think for me because i just knew well this is a part of reality and then it's like oh now you see it but it's like ah but it's there's kind of an important part that it's being but, accepted that it's no longer hiding like so like, but let me say this too. Oh, go ahead, Andrew. But the proper response then is maybe we put down our guns, put them away, and get out our long body size boards and write the repent, the end is nigh, and walk around with bells instead of like going out and like trying to like take over like a government building, right? Like, if I'm understanding the conversation correctly, you know, not like the response that father's talking about again and i just want to make it really clear the response that father is talking about is not quote unquote insurrection like we're not talking about that but like it, again just like lamenting calling to repentance and just well, i'm a, i'm a, yeah i mean i'm gonna go out on a limb today i might have to retract some of this next week we'll see but let's you know um, i mean if that's not what you're saying but, then we'll let, but father, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah i mean because first of all like i'm anti like obviously the black pill is wrong but like you understand what i mean by black pill you know what i mean like i have no hope for this country as an institution like none zero sure i'm not trying i'm not talking about trying to save the red white and the blue let's just be really clear about that you know what i mean like if god allowed byzantium to fall <laughs> like why would he you know what i mean why would we think we're better than byzantium you know what i'm saying like yeah. that that's not like I'm, thank you, Andrew. Like, let's just, I'm not talking about that at all. You know what I mean? Like, some of you out there will remember I've been off to quote from the pulpit 
you know, from the Ambo, America will fall. I, I'm not like, the, it's a both an and, it's a both and thing. Listen, when I was in the Balkans in 2000, it changed my life. Everyone's heard the story before, but I'll say it again for everyone here. It changed my life and it frightened the living daylights out of me because I realized something. Oh, if there's a war, oh, if your, if your society or culture is ripped apart, guess what? You still have to live. Sure. Like most people who I talk with don't know what that means. They don't know what it means because they lived in America their whole life. It's terrifying. And, and if they, what? That's terrifying. It's terrifying it's when terrifying. you actually have to deal with it. It's terrifying. Yeah. And if they've left the country, they've gone to the tourist parts of Europe. I've never been to the tourist parts of Europe except for Rammstein. I went to Rammstein in Germany. But that's just because yeah. I, I had to take a plane over into the Balkans and then another time in Iraq. I've only seen, like, I've only seen Sarajevo and Bosnia and Kosovo. That's what I know about Europe is the Balkans. And what I saw there changed me. And it changed me in such a way that when I came back to the States, I didn't have anybody to talk with except for, you know, the brother I went with over there. But like, even that changed because becoming Orthodox, it was all even more terrifying because it's like, oh, this has happened even before then with the Byzantine Empire and with, you know, Syria and all these other places. What I'm trying to get at is life goes on. And most of us have this idea because of TV and because we've had nothing but mommy and daddy nursing us and giving us whatever, we think the government's going to bail us out. Mommy and dad's going to bail us out. We're gonna... I've seen it with my own eyes. People living in buildings with no front. Making it work. They're not animals. You know what I mean? It's not the road, which terrifies me, the movie and the book, you know? Sure. Like, that terrifies me. Like, it's not the road, but it's like, yo, I seen it with my own eyes. You know what I mean? Churches with barbed wire and gun turrets around them. Seen it with my own eyes, right? So that's a game changer. And that's what I'm talking about is I'm not talking about the three branches of government and all that hooey. Your, your, your vote is nothing. And if, if at, if your vote is nothing at best, it's actually implicit consent. <laughs> Think about that. Can we say that again one more time for the sound bite? just saying so like literally say it again like yeah literally just like yeah, your, vote is nothing. your vote is nothing at best if not actual literal you know implicit consent to something so, so that's why like, a... like oh got a vote it's like ah be careful because you're signing a contract spiritually you may not be there's aware. a spiritual undertone you know or saying? spiritual part of voting zero hope for and sorry i i, I may lose some people see him i'm sorry but like I have zero hope for the institution. When I'm talking about trying to buy us some time, I'm talking about the people I can see. I'm talking about the landmass that I've traversed a couple times in my life. I'm talking about like the nation because we're the nation. It is, it isn't, you know, this is part of the thing that like getting back to the church or government, uh, the constitution and the bill of rights is nice, but it's not eternal. The only the only value of the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, is what you glean from it as a Christian. The yes. things that point to yes. that may be some semblance of Christianity, but it's a document that's based upon humanistic ideals, which sure. has actually un it's undone the fabric by which you could have an, an actual interpersonal relationship it, with God, with God and the Church. Yeah. So let, let's just be clear about that, right? Let's just be clear. If this was a Christian nation. There wouldn't be obelisks in sure. the capital. There'd be crosses. And, sure. and if you don't know what an obelisk is, you can email me and we can talk about it. But the I'll Washington say, Monument. The Washington you know I mean? Monument. Well, yeah, I mean. John D. Rockefeller's grave. Yeah, I'll just put it yeah. this way. You know, uh, 14 fishes. If you don't know what 14 fishes is, then you figure that out. We can talk about that. But 14 fishes is what the obelisk is. And it has nothing to do with Christ in that sense. So let like that's the thing that people that's why we you know nothing that i've said today about like putting a sign on the lawn has to do with like i'm trying to preserve the 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 union the union's done man if you don't know that by now like what are you doing here you know what i mean 
what we're talking about and here and this is what this is the the nuts and bolts of it so if it's not you know falling for that foolish trap of <laughs> those fools on january 6th right if if it's if it's not that then what is it i'll tell you what it is uh it's build your arc and know where everyone else has an arc right and get your kid out of public school and start investing your time in your community start learning uh some skills and some trades beyond clacking on a keyboard you know what i mean find a way to make yourself useful and not in some kind of weird like we're not talking about mad max but i'm just telling you sarajevo had the olympics in 86 almost overnight they became a shelled out country like you have to have a measure there has to be uh, there's a wealth like i don't know like what you would call it but there's an index that you have to have to have the olympics right so if they had the Olympics in 80, was it 86? I think it was, was it 86? I think that's right. I think that's yeah, right. And then, and then boom, it, it, it's, it's all but overnight that they got reduced to what I saw. It happens quick. It happens really like, quick. Why would, like, if, if you are in that group where you where you are so ignorant or, or deluded that you think that can't happen here, I you are exactly who I've been trying to talk to the last year during this project. Wake up. Right. That's not what this is about. But what it is about is being like, you know, I want to, you know, the, <laughs> the pair of Jabez and all that terrible stuff. But like, oh, you know, it's like if if people do repent, God's word is true. Like if people do repent, he will heal their people and their land. And what I'm talking about is the land. I'm talking about like, you know, we could have another fifteen hundred years till Christ comes back. I don't know. I doubt it, but like, I don't, I don't know. You know what I mean? So until then we have to try to hold it down for our kids and our grandkids the best we can. Like, that's what we got to do. Right. But what are we trying to hold down? That's what you got to figure out. Right. If you're trying so, to sorry, father, the, 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 I'm trying to draw it back to the, cause this is very interesting to me. When you talk about the medium the medium for repentance. You talked about a, a, a medium for repentance where all of these things could sort of play themselves out. Mm -hmm. Are you saying this as like, or am I hearing, am I hearing this wrong? Because it's, it's, I'm almost getting a feeling of like Jonah and Nineveh here in a way, mm -hmm. like the Ninevites aren't Jews, right? Like they're not Jews, mm -hmm. but yet they're able to repent in a way that it's like, that it's God actually, God hears that it that it's it's pleasing to god in the way that they repented mm -hmm. and so are we talking here about like a medium that is perhaps outside the church but still allows a measure of repentance that is enough at yeah. a grand scale to to give us some time is that is, is time the, am i to give us interesting some time. to give us some time look i don't know about you i got some people i love that if something goes down now i can't speak for them you know what, what I mean? Meaning. Like, we need time. We need time. You know, I remember I, I brought this up like a couple weeks ago, or whatever. But you know, it was uh, I care. It was like it was like it was like agape meal, or whatever. And I was, you know, I get spicy sometimes. Surprise, surprise, whatever. And I was just like, the Ugh. first time you drink coffee all day. So yeah, I was, yeah. I was just like, man, I, I'm just over everything. Maranatha. If, for those of you who don't know, Maranatha means come, Lord Jesus, whatever. And um, I was talking to. Isn't it come quickly? Isn't come it quickly, like Lord Jesus, yeah. Right? And I was talking to his sister, you know, and he's like, oh, Mary Nafa. She's like, no, father, we need more time. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, Mary, you're right. Forgive me. Yeah, we need more time. We yeah. need more time. And that's where I'm at. Like, if it's so late. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's so late. Lord, we just please give us a little bit more time because we're like, there's so many people who are not ready. Sure. There's so many people who are, I mean, just so not ready. And, and the thing is about Jonah and the Ninevites, listen, let me tell you about the Ninevites, man. Let me tell you about the Ninevites. Like, this is important. Uh, the Ninevites, they had these, the, these gates. Do you know about this? Do you know about this? The Ninevites had these gates. And in these gates, they had, um, they're like stories tall, like stories high. 
they had these gates where they'd have these iron bands and all these iron bands were like embossed, you know, uh, these detailed kind of like hieroglyphics of like torture, of crazy, crazy barbaric torture, right? And these gates, this is what guarded Nineveh. It's like, this is what we do to our enemies. Like crazy gnarly torture, right? Like heinous stuff. Um, these, this is why Jonah was like, I don't want to go there. Like these, these people, right? They are inhuman, right? Even God wanted to save them and their cattle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you read Jonah, right? That's how, like, you don't understand how merciful God is. And, and, and we fail in not reflecting that. But that mercy doesn't mean that we're like, hey, anything goes. And that's part of the problem. That's the problem with this dialectic. It's like, you know, I mean, that was one of the things I saw firsthand. It's like, oh, you know, all these people like, you're a mean priest. You're not a priest. You're not a Christian. You're like, whatever. It's like, that's part of the problem. Is if you say anything, if you say, no, this is wrong. Like, no, don't do that. Like, not only is, is it immoral, it's unchristian. You know what I mean? Like, I'll say it. Abortion's wrong. Ooh, hot right? take. Hot take. Uh, God help them. You know, anyone who's willing to repent, you have a home here at my parish at least. But if you're not repentant of your homosexuality and transgender worldview and practices, you're wrong. Get out of here. You're wrong. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? You, you, need, you need to repent, you know? And if you're an idolater, guess what? If you're an idolater, you're wrong, right? If you're making your ethnicity, you know, um, white supremacist guy, BLM guy, black Hebrew Israelite guy, La Raza guy, like whatever your, you know, samurai guy, whatever your thing is, you're an idolater and you're wrong and you need to repent. I'm, I'm like, that's wrong. It's, it's wrong. I'm just saying it. You know what I mean? That being said, if you're willing to repent, like all of us are, that's what Paul talks about. He has that whole litany of former sins. And he says, as many of you former were, like we were all those things. That's that's the trick. God wants us to repent, you know what I'm saying? But in order for that to happen, the church has got to call it out. And that's, that's where we're at tonight is I'm saying, oh, we got to start calling this stuff out, man. You know what I mean? And it, because it, it, it isn't, which is why, <laughs> may God, may God, may God grant an audience with a better candidate than myself. But someone in the church needs to talk to Ye. Someone in the church needs to talk to Candace Owen. Someone in the church needs to talk to Milo. Like the, someone in the church who has some sense and is willing to not play the game, but like give it as it is, whether they accept it or not. That's what's needed. We need, like, we need the prophetic utterance to say like this is what's up. You know what I mean? And that's why getting to what you're saying, Cyprian, I don't want to lose that, is that's why this medium, that's why I'm just seeing is like, if it's not this thing right here, it's something in that lines. We need to, we need to see where the medium is because public repentance is a thing. We talked, we touched on this a couple of weeks ago. Like public repentance is a thing, but that well was poisoned with the whole summer of love with the George Floyd riots. Because people are like, I don't want to hear about public repentance because that just sounds like BLM stuff. That sounds like woke stuff. It's like, no, public repentance is a thing. We need to publicly not re see the 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 summer of love was not about repentance. It was about vengeance and it was about poisoning something sure. else, about the idolatry, sure. right? But we need to repent of the abortion, of the sodomy, um, of the inhuman practices we need we need to repent of all those of the division you know what i mean all those things you know racism whatever all those things need to be repented of but people but that repentance has to go beyond just the kind of and it has to be both and on the personal level on the community level in the parish in the family but it, but it's like we like the principalities are keeping us from getting it above the the parish level like we can't even get, that's part of the problem with this mess in the church right now is like what people don't get is like, 
I'll tell you why the jurisdiction problem, jurisdiction issue is a problem. It's a real problem on a lot of levels. Uh, what jurisdiction issue are you referring to? Uh, you know, there's all the, it's like the different jurisdictions, Orthodox Church. It's like it waters down our. You're our, saying in the states, in the, the states, states, there's in the states. okay in because in states. other because in other countries that's not the case. No, there's Everywhere one jurisdiction. Like the Everywhere it's <laughs> like the Church of Georgia. The yeah, Church of exactly, Russia, exactly. Church well, of we have that it just is not the greatest. But it, it's a problem because it it here's the thing. There's a pastoral issue. You know, one church says, "Hey, you can do this." Another church says, "You can't." That's a problem. But I'm gonna tell you something. That's not the real, real problem. Because if people are willing, you can work through that. You know, anyone can repent if they're willing. I see where you're going, Father. On the I'm larger not. level of being able to have public repentance, you can't do it. And that's why, that's the real reason why, Father, I'm, I'm going to throw this out there. There's Father Josiah Trinum did like a couple weeks ago, he did a thing on the jurisdiction issue. And it's good. It, it's good. And I love Father Josiah. I have nothing but respect for him. But you know, I'm, I'm not calling him out, but I'm saying the thing that I, I think he misses out on, that everyone that I think misses out on is the read, like the strategy of what's happening. It People look divide at- Divide and conquer. It's, yeah, it's warfare, yeah, divide it's and warfare. conquer. People look at the issue too much on psychological. Like it's all the, the petty Byzantine politics of the Greeks and the OCA. It's like, no, it is. But the thing is, is like, it's really principalities. The division there is about the strategy. Remember, God plays chess and not checkers, and so does the devil. You know what I mean, the devil's trying to get you to play checkers, but he's playing chess too. And so when people look at the stuff like that, they're looking at it as a game of checkers, and it's chess. The church can't get past that level of public repentance. It can't get to that level because it's mired down in all this petty stuff. It's psychological. It's on this human level. That is the number one reason why the jurisdictional issue in America is a problem. Because the Orthodox Church, when it's functioning as it, as it should canonically, is the most powerful institution on the planet. It is the institution, right? And mm -hmm. someone's like, okay, whatever well, sounds crazy, I'm, I'm going to shut you up and tell you right now why. Metropolitan Amphiloki, may God grant him paradise. He stopped the godless government in its tracks with the power of the church. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look it up. Metropolitan Amphiloki, Montenegro, stopped them. Boom, right? He resisted. With the power of the church, the protests, the prayers, the vigils, it meant something. Outside the power of the church, eh, you know what I mean? It's just people trying to flex and just scrambling to be busy, which is what you're talking about. Like, you know, the, the inaction, not doing something, that's necessary sometimes because people just want to scramble. I just want to be busy. I remember those days. I remember being like, we need to hit the streets just because you're so desperate. You feel like you need to do something. But the reality is- With it's no like, contemplation. No, no contemplation, contemplation whatsoever. Like, yeah. Here's the thing. Right contemplation brings right action. Right. And when you don't see right action, it means there's no contemplation. You know yep. what I mean? And that's the thing is, if people understood what I'm saying- <laughs> that's why it needs to happen because it's only then because there is no other body that can lead this quote unquote nation into public repentance. No one has mm. an idea of what that means. No mm. one, no one does. Dr. James Cohn, Martin Luther King, these people have talked about it. They don't know what it looks mm. like. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know really know. They don't no. know what it is. They don't know what no. it is. It's, it's on the level of human psychological social constructs. Mm-hmm. Only in the church can it, because of the church deals with it on that level of principality, period. You know what I mean? Which is, I don't want to say too much about this, but that's another reason why some other brothers, God bless them, because they're, they're really entertaining to listen to. But I just want to give everybody a warning, like, be careful, because when people start talking about principalities and powers, like, you got to, not everyone is talking about the same thing. Some people... They will talk about principalities and powers and they'll want to kind of like divest the reality of what's happening there because they don't want to look kooky. 
And I, I'm right, just, it's just I'm, symbolic. It's just it's symbolic. Just symbolic. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's, it's, it's symbolic here. Yeah, it, it's 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 not a symbolic it's 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 more literal than people want to acknowledge just put yeah. it yeah saying. yeah so but, but that's the big thing is getting to this place of like public repentance and it can't happen like that's part of why this medium is necessary i think to buy it some time because i have hope in god and in the church but i don't really have hope in like people like but like I, you know if god blesses like that's if God allows, that's that's our way forward. Is working to repent within our within our homes, within our parishes, and then within dioceses, and with, and like really being like, no, we need to get to this place, not for the sake of kumbaya, not for mm-hmm. the sake of it's nice, and not for the sake of convenience for pastoral care. We need to do it so that we can repent as a nation in the yes. way that things will actually turn around because everything else will just be morality. And the reason why I'm saying that is the repentance that would come from the life of the church would be effectual on the spiritual plane and it will yes. permeate society and the hearts of men and give a message to the powers that be in a way that isn't just morality. Cause the morality that what the medium consists of, but at least it's something, at least it's something but that morality doesn't necessarily penetrate to the marrow like it needs to. Mm-hmm. And that's where the temptation from the right is still very viable. But it's almost like the poison we got to swallow until some, until the Lord grants a prophetic utterance and people can really hear the call of repentance. So I actually have maybe something that's a little bit like this is actually might not be the worst illustration of what Father is talking about. But like, this is that last alliance of men and elves, yeah, you know, that's a great but, one. but we know that the powers are going to get the ring back. We know like this isn't the end. Like we know going into the battle that Isildur will fall, will not resist temptation and the ring will fall back into the powers of darkness. Like we're just like, and if, if that's the narrative of this last alliance of the house of Elrond, you know, in the, in the, in the men, coming together to fight Sauron if that's the narrative going through their head of like we know that this is only a matter of time this is just pushing back the inevitable like it you know not the inevitable as in doom and gloom but the inevitable as in like what what we have going for us in America blah 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 then like our portion of the story our portion of the story that that like that might be the end for us and that's okay because you know then we get more time to shore up our ranks, to make sure that everything's set, you know, and not actually what did happen, which is they all got lazy and assumed that the ring was taken care of. So I don't know. I mean, yeah, that the vigilance doesn't end because I think that that is what's missing from the, let's say the narrative on the right right now is there's some notion that, Oh, if we could just win. And I think that's the problem with the, the, the Trump, the Trumpism. Is that like, no, 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 no. Or DeSantisism is maybe even worse. Yeah, is that it's like, just give it to DeSantis and then everything will be fine. And no more vigilance. Like, we'll be done. It'll right. be good. Right. I'm right. trying to think of who Trump would be in Lord of the Rings, but probably Saruman. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's building his own army. Mm-hmm. He's in a tower. Like, mm-hmm. he's listening to Wormtongue. Oh, who's That's- Wormtongue? Man, we could really we could take this places. We could really take He's, this places. Uh, well, wor- Wormtongue Wormtongue would be whoever his uh his it was probably Wormtongue is probably Fox News as a whole. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a really good meme one time of like from the movie where I can't remember it. Maybe it's Sar- Saruman. I can't remember. He's like Wormtongue is whispering into someone's ear and the old person, oh, oh no. Well, it doesn't matter. Wormtongue, Wormtongue is uh, whispering in Theoden's ear, but he's controlled by Saruman. Yeah, okay, okay. so maybe that's the meme. It's Theoden, yeah. and yeah. it's like my parents is Theoden, and Fo- Fox News is yeah, like... Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, there you yeah. go. That's I was like, it. no, that's, that's fantastic. <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, and I felt like there was something else I wanted to ask, but I, I We're can't. at two hours, though, Andrew. We are at two hours. Father, is there anything, is there a thread you needed to wrap up? I can't remember when I interrupted you. I'm trying to think, man. 
There was a question I wanted to ask about something, but I can't remember what it was. Well, this is going to, I mean, I have a feeling this is going to be the conversation of the show. From here on out, I have a feeling. Could be. Um, I mean. My my main thing is that it just, from jump, from this whole thing, is just like, I. it's not even like I have the same dislike of him that I used to. Because I used to dislike Trump, Trump. for a very yeah. different reason than I do now. And Same. it's important for me to to make that distinction of like, this is no longer a, well, he's racist, he's Nazi, he's a misogynist. It's, that's like, oh, all no. that stuff may be true. I have no idea. It could be true. That's not what I'm, that's not what. But like, it's funny because Cyprian, you called him that a long time ago. You called him a snake a long time ago. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah. always the adjective or the way of the term I've used it. And then father sent us that video of him like i am the snake like you know he didn't say it but he's like this is the snake the snake is like you take the snake in it's gonna bite you you know it's like it's the same thing as the scorpion and the frog but it also tells you exactly what it is exactly and i think that that's the thing about trump is that and the trumpists the big thing that you have to be to be a trumpist is you have to basically not trust your lying eyes Mm -hmm. because it's like sure Here's this man telling you and showing you exactly who he is. And it's like, no, he's not like that. He's not like that. No, 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 no. That's just, and it's just like. And I mean, if this dude actually over the course of like the next year, whatever, actually seemed to really repent, like maybe even stepped out of like the presidential limelight, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's the thing. If he was really repenting, he would not run for president. So I think my, my, my opinion would change on him. Like, it's not even sure. like a, it's not even I hate orange man. That's not what's going on here. Like, you know, and there's times even in the last two or three years, I've like kind of maybe a part of me has missed him a little bit, just like out of like some weird, well, at least when he was in power, this kind of stuff wasn't going on, blah, blah, blah. I bet that that's not the whole truth. And I know it. So it was um, building. It was building. Sure. You know, and it was building. He, he laid, he laid a lot of the groundwork for this a lot of the groundwork for this because he made he made the people who are doing this wild stuff he made a lot of their views uh so for instance like palatable yeah the blm stuff nobody would have gone for that before trump Mm -mm. the Mm. transgender stuff nobody would have gone for that before. i mean that that's why you have to have i mean that's why it is the hegelian dialectic exactly he allowed for the other exactly extremes you know no i i agree and i see that now i mean it's it's all part of the the big the big the big hoo-ha so uh, oh that's what i wanted to say so um i think father was talking about and uh, as reluctant as i am to kind of wrap up on my on my word uh, i'll just say this real quick um i think something that father touched on earlier is like when we're talking about principles and powers powers and principalities we're talking about maybe talking about two separate things that people might be talking about so i can say to someone um say my lovely mother-in-law i love sophia sophia you know no offense but like what i will say to her oh the demons are flooding the streets with drugs Mm -hmm. she'll say she might think and i don't know this is how she actually would think but you know this someone of her mindset might think like oh yeah you know kind of like in a metaphorical sense like yeah the demons represent the power the 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 darkness you know they kind of you know, blah, blah, blah. It's like a, it's a representation, but it's like, no, 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 no. Literally the demon, the demonic influence knows exactly what they're doing. And they're using the government to flood the streets with drugs and drug dealers to flood the streets with drugs in a very real and visceral way. It's like, like, you, you know, I, I can't be much more explicit than that other than saying that like, it is, it is, the energy it is the the dark powers that by which these people slip by quote unquote slip by border patrols it's it's the it's the money finding the right hands at the right time it's the shipment container being overlooked it's the drug dealers being able to blend into shadows to avoid by the way dude all of that people should know that is all so real yeah like and and it but it's also true i mean it's true on both sides Right. Like there, you know, when something is happening that is happening and being manipulated by the other realm. Yes. Yes. You know what I mean? 
but but I mean, part of the thing is like corruption on that level. Where does that come from? Yes. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, where does that come from? And then like, just the the amount of corruption that you can see, which is, I mean, that's part of where we're at. It's like people are just like beside themselves. Like, how is this possible? It's like, well, how do you think things got so bad unless there's evil? Unless there's the there's an actual demonic direct hand involved. You know what but I mean? That's- and- it's too much no sorry it's just too much for people sometimes like it it can't it there needs to be this um this disconnect in order to keep things comfortable keep things like 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 the first time that i saw mer bearing icon when i was like looking and seeing i was like oh this makes me very very uncomfortable because as, as it should because it's both like lovely because it's just showing god's love but it's bringing it on a realness that may that is clearly uncomfortable and it's very comfortable for people to sit back and say, that, oh, you know, like the demonic powers and blah, blah, blah are filling our streets with drugs. But it's like, no, 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 no. Like they helped create methamphetamine. They helped create fentanyl. Like they helped create whatever nar- narcotic you want to choose. It doesn't matter. Um, they helped create it. And then, you know, it causes the destruction of man, which is something that they want very, very much so. So anyway. Um, so yeah, we are at two hours. Normally I would read a letter here. Um, I'm not going to tonight because the one that I found, I think we'd be doing it a, a, a disservice by trying to wrap it up in the next like 10 minutes. I also remember that I was going to, uh, read that letter about the kiss. Uh, that's not the way that this episode rolled, uh, the act of kissing, what the spiritual act of kissing something is. Um, that's not the way this episode went and I'm not going to try and shoehorn it in here. The other thing I will say is, is that we just entered the nativity fast. So release schedule might be interfered with. There might be a week or two where we don't release something because father's too busy with services and we're, that's going to always take precedent over this. Um, so that's to be expected every time we enter a fast, every time we enter a fast, especially uh, Lent, but just as, you know, just as much, if not a little bit less than, you know, with nativity, there will be times where we are not able to do a week so just guys expect that and you know bear with um be expecting new music on the podcast playlist on spotify which is i think the link is in the description which uh, another for... great christmas album by the way uh kemper crabs black chris oh it's wonderful okay uh and the one i forgot to mention was that there's this like dungeon synth guy who released um grandma's cottage and it is so awesome father have you listened to it father Mm -mm. oh um i'll put it on the playlist there's this one album it's like this warm like really warm really like soulful like synth music and it's just this dude sitting down and writing you can tell like maybe even in one take just kind of like writing this like like play it over speaker and then like hang out and watch your family it is beautiful. It is like nostalgic and warm and lovely. And I listen to it a lot for um during Christmas. It's it's just a fantastic Christmas album. No words, no, it's 10 minutes long. The entire album is 10 minutes long oh. and it's fantastic. Um, there's our merch store, royalpath.store. Okay, got it in one. Um, and then also feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I get your guys' emails. Um, and uh I have all your questions queued up and everything like that. That's just, you know, I work with the role of the episode at, and my emails, Andrew at Royal path dot network. Please feel free to reach out to me at any time. Um, and if you need father's information or something like that, please let me know. Otherwise, thank you for having a good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.